For decades, nothing screamed British style more than British home stores. What began in South London in 1928 became a thriving chain of 160 odd shops nationwide. But well, that was then. Now BHS is in administration, led there by a man who's been bankrupt three times and lumbered with a hole in its pension pot that seems to be 571 million pounds wide. And the fallout from all this really could be immense. One of the best known retailers in this country, a knight of the realm no less, has been accused of recklessly selling BHS, even though it's helped to make him a multiple billionaire. Overnight, a man fated as one of our greatest entrepreneurs has been regarded as a bit of a pariah. Well, it, it, when, you, when you get really egregious cases, and which I suspect this is one, uh, then it brings to light how casually the duties of directors are being taken by some people. And I think we therefore need to remind people who work in business, who have directors' duties, that they do include rather more than simply making money in the short run. <laughs> Sir Philip Green makes an almost pantomime villain. The hundred million pound super yachts, the models hanging off his shoulder, the massive dividends, the offshore tax haven. Fated by some in the establishment, seen as vulgar in the eyes of others. But how much is Sir Philip Green really to blame for all this? Well, Newsnight has heard the views from all sides in what just about everyone agrees is a sorry tale. So, what really happened to BHS? great value, good quality. It had all looked so very hopeful, money in one side, money out the other. But friends have told us that Sir Philip thinks he should have sold BHS a decade ago. When Sir Philip did sell it in 2015, it went for just a pound. But the buyer wasn't anyone you've really heard of. It was a very little known businessman called Dominic Chappelle, a man with no retail experience at all, but a very colorful past. So. Who is he? Well, since his takeover of BHS, it's emerged that Dominic Chappelle has been made bankrupt three times, although he insists that one of those bankruptcies is going to be annulled. Newsnight has also discovered that 15 years ago, he was charged with theft and the handling of stolen goods in relation to the disappearance of a 47,000 pound sports car. But when we spoke to Mr. Chappelle about this, he insisted that the case had been thrown out and that he was entirely innocent. But what about those bankruptcies? Well, anyone wanting to know about Dominic Chappelle has to come here to the Isle of Wight. We've just come off the hovercraft. He used to make this journey in his helicopter. Well, this is Island Harbour, a unique and historical area, a true jewel in the crown for the Isle of Wight. Not my words, but those of this man. This is Dominic Chappelle, the chief executive of Island Harbour Holdings, or at least he was, until his development here went bust seven years ago, owing more than 20 million pounds, much of it to local businesses who were and still are absolutely furious, including the company that printed this brochure. How many of these did you make? From memory, about 5,000. Five, Tim five, Sell five, lost out on nearly £13,000. In this particular project, we have to pay our paper suppliers who gave us the paper, our ink suppliers who gave us the ink, our people that did the uh, UV varnishing, we had to pay them as well. So there's a considerable amount of money, other than staff, that is paid out by a company when this, this type of work happens. Would you say it was reckless, the behaviour? Yes. Damaging and reckless? Mm. Well, it damaged me to the tune of £13,000. So. You know, in those eight years... Hamilton's Fine Foods lost a similar amount. If BHS had phoned you and said, we're thinking of selling <laughs> out to this man, what would you have said? Well, I would have been speechless to begin with, but they even accepted the approach. Um, and I would have just said, there's no way you can do this, Mr Green. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of prominent businessmen and women who've been through bankruptcies and administration, so there's nothing fundamentally wrong with selling a company to someone who's got a chequered financial past. But this one does feel a bit different. BHS, such a prominent name on our high street, but also responsible for a lot of people's livelihoods and pensions. So the questions that arise now are, who was checking the credentials of Dominic Chappelle? 
and were enough tough questions asked at the right time. But right at the top of that list, who was vouching for Dominic Chappelle? Sir Philip's lawyers, Linklaters, told us they got reassurances from Mr Chappelle's lawyers, Oldswang. Linklaters told us, Oldswang confirmed that Oldswang had carried out detailed due diligence on their client, Mr Chappelle, and that it had not raised any concerns in relation to impropriety. Chappelle's lawyers had earlier told us, we can confirm Oldswang did not provide any reference to Arcadia on behalf of Dominic Chappelle. What is clear is that everybody involved in the sale of BHS knew about Dominic Chappelle's bankruptcies, but nobody thought they were a deal breaker. So a very rich man sells his shops to another man who's got no retail experience. On paper that looks odd, but is there anything actually legally wrong with what happened? If you um, want to sell the asset, you, you own this company, uh, you're entitled to dispose of it as you wish. Uh, and um, you don't have to ensure that um, the person purchasing the asset can comply with his or her own obligations to the company, that's after the event. You're entitled to dispose of your shares as you wish. The single most controversial part of BHS's collapse was that hole in the staff pension scheme valued at over £570 million. Controversial because those pensions are now being paid out of a rescue fund that millions of workers have paid into, and not by Sir Philip Green, by Dominic Chappelle, or by anyone else who's made money out of BHS. What has never before been revealed is that two years ago, Sir Philip Green planned a massive restructuring of BHS called Project Thor. One of the main things it would have achieved was putting a lot more money into the pension fund, including about 80 million from Sir Philip himself. But it needed approval from the pension regulator. And that was something that the regulator wasn't prepared to give. After months of discussion, the global economy had changed and Project Thor was shelved. Could the regulator have saved the scheme? On Monday, its boss suggested the regulator had been kept in the dark by BHS about those plans to sell to Mr Chappelle's group. They discussed a number of propositions with us uh, and then uh, the next we heard that there was a specific development was the, uh, was the sale. Not so, says the man who oversees the BHS pension fund. To my recollection is quite clear that the, all of the key stakeholders were involved in that sale process and we were all involved in regular dialogue and discussions. Once it had learnt of the sale, the pension regulator launched an immediate inquiry known as an anti-avoidance case. Now I spoke to Dominic Chappelle at length today and he said that inquiry had a huge impact on his ability to borrow money from banks at a competitive rate. He said the inquiry was, in his opinion, one of the main reasons that BHS had gone into administration. But others say there was one very simple option available to Sir Philip Green, but he failed to take it. John Ralph has been asked by MPs to provide specialist briefing on pension protection to their inquiry. If you're like Philip Green and you're thinking about selling a subsidiary of the pension scheme, and that could, you know, uh, that could increase the risk of the pension scheme, there is a very, very straightforward mechanism that you can use. It's called pre-clearance. So you go to the regulator, you fill in a form, the form's on the website, it's very straightforward. You explain what the facts of what you're doing are, you explain the impact on the pension scheme, and you explain what you're doing to mitigate that impact. That might involve putting an amount of money in. You then can get a, a sign-off from the regulator that they will not pursue you. And I think I'd like to ask, or however strong your legal advice was, what was the commercial reason for not taking a bit of time and effort and trouble and getting that pre-clearance? There are senior executives within BHS who believe the brand can be saved, but even if it is, the pension scheme won't be. That lifeboat fund will now prop it up. And that raises bigger questions. Some see this as a corporate equivalent of a get out of jail free card. Well, let's be clear that, that setting up the Pension Protection Fund was a progressive step forward because it was completely wrong 
that if somebody lost their job in a company failure, they should also lose their lifetime pension. So it's absolutely right to underwrite and protect pensions in those situations. But clearly it is open to abuse by employers taking money out of a company and then dumping responsibility on the taxpayer. There's every chance that Sir Philip Green hasn't broken any rules at all to do with the sale of BHS, that he's stuck to the letter of the law, that he followed his advisor's recommendations. But there's also a big chance that he's still going to have to write a big, fat check to the pension fund. Why? Because his reputation really is at stake here. This whole complex story is about more than just who is legally or technically right. It's about perceptions of fairness, about what we as a society think of as fair. At the Island Harbour Marina, it was a new developer who picked up the remnants of Mr Chappelle's failed venture. With BHS, it's now down to the Pension Protection Fund to help pensioners and the administrator to try to sell the company. He's analysing five or six separate bids, one of which involves Dominic Chappelle. 